And I, I think that you just, I mean, this is cliche, but you have to keep hope alive. You have to believe in what you're doing. Now, and, and, and I'm not going to say I'm lucky. I work damn hard for what I have. I work for it. Nobody gave it to me. It was like I had to be out there. My poor mom, I would like drag her along with me and I had these mannequin heads. And if there was an event, I would drag all these mannequin heads with me and sell them at some. events. You've got some for our viewers to show, do you not? Can you put one in the camera? I do. Uh, you know what? I, I am a diversified company, so I have diversity. <laughs> so I will show you some of the top styles that are in. A lot of my wigs are salon-inspired cuts and colors. So um, this uh, wig right here happens to be in fashion right now. She's oh, got wow. the, 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 she's got the, rooted touch along with the gray uh everyone's wearing their hair wig now so she's like really popular and new she's gorgeous she's gorgeous, actually yeah. gorgeous and yeah. i'll do a slow turn here she'll model for you so you can see the hair the 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 wigs in it and she's a wash and go synthetic so once you wash her let her air dry she air dries it to the shape the second one that I have is a human hair one, and um, she is styled. I love the way I styled her hair. She's got things going forward, and she's sharp. So it's just like put on and go. What I always tell people, I never have a bad hair day, ever. I don't care what I look like in my clothes, just got to have that hair going on, and I do. So these two, these two are two of well over a hundred wigs I have in my shop. And again, if you look at very closely the hairline, it looks like it's growing out of your scalp and you could part it either way too. Yeah. So it has multi diverse, it has multi uh, directional parting on them. Um, I mean, they speak for themselves. I mean, I don't really have to do like that much selling. I just make sure the person is comfortable. I ask them, what would they like? Um, sometimes it's sometimes different. Sometimes it's what they already have. I also provide for men. I do men's hair pieces and wigs and I do wigs for children. So I make sure I cover everyone so that no one is left out. So, uh, and I'm proud that I could do that and bring good products to the community, to the public. Absolutely. So when you know you make a difference to people, isn't that something that has sort of kept you focusing from maybe if you didn't make it on Tuesday, but you would make it on Thursday. So how did that contribute to your willingness and ability to keep going? Because I saw the difference, like you said, and that was, um, you know, that was, uh, I just saw the difference that I was making with people. I, I, I would have people thank me for doing this line of work, which like shocked me, like, really? I mean, I'm just doing what I love and I'm doing, I'm bringing you something so that, um, you know, you could feel yourself again. I know for eight years, uh, I taught for life with cancer. Um, I taught a class called All About Wigs. And I would let the women know that, you know, I, I didn't have my shop then. I started back in 2003 teaching. But I would say, this is the way you need to be treated when you go into a wig store. These are the questions you should ask, and these are the questions they should ask, and you should always have privacy. So that went a long way. I stopped teaching for life with cancer in 2010. I also had a two-year contract with the Nova Fairfax Hospital on site with cancer patients, which was outstanding. So I, I just, I love my work. I feel exceptionally blessed to be in this position to do that and incredibly humbled by the women and men and children that come before me that um, I get to help. And that smile on their face when they get that wig is so priceless. It just tells me everything I need to know. So that's how I feel about that. So do you think if you were starting your idea now or your, your business now, during the COVID-19 crisis, so to speak, would you approach things differently than you had looking back? What well, would 
you know, I, 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 I think you need to know where you're at before you can see where you're going. I think that that's really critical because, I mean, right now, I think it would be different because not every place has opened up. This is a, a, a place where, you know, you're in close contact with people. So, of course, I'm masked and gloved. My clients are masked and gloved. And then I also have a garment that I put over them as well. Um, I take their temperature. I mean, I try to do everything to make them feel safe, that they're in a safe place. Um, it is by appointment. So there's like one person in and then other people are out waiting. Yeah, I was going to say it's always one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yeah, it is always, yeah. always. And, yeah. and, you know, people like that. I mean, I, I've always worked by appointment. And that is because, you know, my, my store is not a store store. It's almost like a wig apartment. And when I sit down with someone, it's like they're at my house and we're just having a conversation. And I've heard so much feedback about that, that people actually really like that. Although I have over 100 wigs in the shop, it is still very comforting. There's oversized chairs, pillows, curtains. There's a room that you go sit in for your wig, for treatment. And a lot of times we're talking, they're telling me when their next chemo is or how they lost their hair because I'm very interested because I need to know how to progress from there and what it is that they're looking for, be it human or synthetic hair. They're both, you know, equally right. as good, but, you know, people have preferences. But going forward with, to going back to your question with the COVID-19, would I do everything the same? I don't think I could because times, it's different times. So it would call for different creativity, but you do have to be, again, you do have to be creative. You, you have to think, okay, what would people think of this product? I mean, ask your family, ask your friends. You know, you might not always get the right answer that you want. They might go, oh, I don't know, it's been done before. But you gotta be able to say, so what? I could do it better. I mean, you have to have that belief because there's gonna be people that, you know, unfortunately, you know, they're gonna tell you, you can't do it. I wouldn't listen to that. I never have. Um, have I been, have I, people have told me, oh, that's been done before. Absolutely. Do you think I cared about what they said? Look at where I'm at now. You, you have to, you just have to believe in what you're doing yep. and you just have to just keep at it. But I would think now with this COVID-19, you would have to be a little bit creative, but we all are. Like I said, I take Oh, every business has to really go through at this point and reevaluate. You have I mean, to. There is not one organization that is not reevaluating what they're all about, what they're going to deliver, and how they're going to do it going forward. No well, question. Safety first. Safety above Absolutely. all else. The science is Absolutely. safety first. Because so, that so, client wants to know, are you yeah. going to protect them? And then you're protected they do. as well. So, they do. Yeah. So, so I, I wanted to use the last few minutes um, to give a sum up the first three steps, Ovida, for a business if they want to go and seek help. What would those be? So we only have a few minutes left, so it has to be real concise. The first, so, step, the first step would be to get a dance number. Yep. That's one. Whether you're so proprietor or a large or medium-sized business. Second, to be able to engage with the government, you need to be certified. Seek every certification that you can get because that's going to help you tremendously. And third, connect yourself with a major corporation that is a company. And SBA offers a mentoring program as well, but you only get two. In my program, you get 2600 Connect yourself with a corporation that can help you build, help you grow, help finance you, and give you the confidence and the opportunity to be able to build, grow, or start a business. That's a, that's a great idea. And Laura, what, a, a final advice from you, what would you tell someone who either has started a business recently or is about to start a new one from a personal entrepreneurial point of view, what would you tell them as the main advice? I am a true entrepreneur all the way to the bone. I would applaud them and say, good for you. And just believe in what you're doing and stay with it. That would be my advice. I, I love entrepreneurs. I love them because they're willing to take that risk 
and they believe in it. And I love that. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, both of you. We're actually already at the end of the hour here. Time flies. <laughs> Are you wearing a wig now? This is a wig, Laura. This is a wig. It's unbelievable. So you never have a bad day. If you if you look at the front page of my website, it will say a new experience in an incredible hair change. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found inspiration, hope and motivation to look past the COVID-19 challenge towards the opportunities life constantly creates. Remember, we are creators of our destiny. What we focus on and spend our energy on matters. We can spend it on being angry and put our hand in the sand, or we can focus on what you want your world to look like. That's what makes the difference between how we get through this challenge and move beyond. In that sense, I wish you a wonderful evening, some clarity on where it is you want to go next in your life, and I hope you tune in next week for a new episode in our Rising Above Race series where we talk about dealing with transgenerational trauma and compare how Germans are dealing with their historic burden of the Holocaust and colonial times to what can be learned and applied to American circumstances. See you then. Good night.